guys enjoying that it's not that hot out today, huh? Hey guys. Um, whew, uh, let's see, where do I start for today? Um, well, just gonna do another video, uh, kind of going over some of the things that we're doing this weekend. We got a little bit of rain coming down. Um, we got that tropical storm or whatever's left of it. And uh, we are just kind of trying to keep up on things this week. Um, did get uh, my gate post set, so um, right now I'm trying to track down the rest of the hardware that I need to finish out that fence. Um, as you can see, I'm going to flip around here real quick. I have some fencing. <laughs> um, this is actually the sheep and goat fence right here that we used for uh, the pig area. I won't be using that. I'm going to be using the uh, this guy back here. Hopefully it's enough to do the first run on the fence. I do have two two spools of it, but that one's a lot shorter. Um, probably not going to be able to do that, but uh, um, I'd like to use the sheep and goat fence for everything, but it's more expensive, it's heavier, and uh, um, well, it's, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Um, but the field fence... Field fence is what we're using for the bigger animals. Um, it's kind of graduated from the bottom up. Uh, but it's good enough for the cows. Uh, and um, it works for the goats too. Goats do stick their heads through it. Sometimes they get stuck. Uh, you all probably want to see what's going on over here. These guys are still getting bigger. They're inside because it is raining. I did notice something about the chickens. These are the baby chickens, not the juniors. If you take a good look, you can see it does appear. So these are all olive eggers and Easter eggers. And it does appear that some of them are crested. You see they have a little hat there. <laughs> Hi guys, I don't mean to scare you. But yeah. Uh, some of them are crested, so I'm not sure exactly what they're they're crossed with. Um, olive eggers and Easter eggers aren't really a breed. Here's the turkeys. Since everybody loves the turkeys. Hi, guys. These guys are little turds. They like knocking over their water dish. Um, they're getting too big to be in here, and I got to work on something for them. But the, uh, the olive eggers and Easter eggers, uh, just something that you probably didn't know about them or might want to know about them. They're not an actual breed of chicken. They are, uh, they're a cross. Uh, so the, your, your typical chickens will lay uh, brown, white, blue, um, and cream. Some, some of them have a cream color. Uh, the, the Easter eggers are typically derived from Americana stock, which are blue eggers. If I hope I got that right. Somebody will tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and olive eggers are a mix, are a cross between a blue layer and a brown layer. And uh, once you get an olive egg or a green layer, um, if you keep breeding against brown, you'll either get brown or green, and it's a darker green. Um, so typically you're going to use something that's, uh, i got to clean up a little bit in here. Um, that's an Americana as a uh, as a basis, and then you're gonna cross it with some brown layer breed, and um, whether it's Well Summer, Marin, uh, you know anything, and you get green layers, and those are olive eggers. Um, so I'm not sure what they're crossed with. They're pretty cool looking. Um, I haven't had any crested chickens, so I kind of like what's going on there. It looks like me when I get out of bed. Um, but other than that, things we're working on. Since it's a rainy day, I'm working on this guy. I got, as you can see, an oil leak down there. Pretty substantial. I uh, think I can fix that up. Uh, I'm going to get this guy cleaned up and ready to go again. Um, this was the 
mower we actually bought with the property that's been a little bit abused lately and um, other than that we are going to work on the fence a little bit uh, among other things so that's our kind of today goal um, we have uh, let me take a walk with you we have worked a little bit more on getting those blackberries out I'll flip around moving as you can see we've torn out all the blackberries from the chicken run those will get burned up here hopefully when it dries up and we'll be working on cleaning that I'll be taking down that little elder tree down there get rid of that and the only tree that'll be left in there is the mulberry that we planted so you can see we have some blackberries growing up but we'll get this all cleaned out I'll spray it down and till it up and hopefully that'll be ready um, haven't made much progress on the interior of the chicken coop yet got to be able to get some materials for that uh, and uh, as you can see as we walk down I got one fence post left to set that's the other side of the gate post I'm not going to be setting that until we have a gate in there so I can measure it properly. Part of the reason, and I'm going to come down here on this gate, is to make sure we have enough room on the uh, between the post and the gate for a two-way two -way latch like this. It just makes it way easier to come in and out. Over and say hi to the guys or gals, as it may be. Hi, girls. <laughs> so, as you can see, we got a bunch of stuff going on, um, but all little stuff at this point. Um, yeah, I say little, but doing a fence is not little. But we're going to get working on that, and uh, hopefully um, hopefully we'll be able to get the uh, at least the first half of the fence done. Oh, I got a, I got a escaped convict. Are you calamity? Hi, calamity. What are you doing out here? We have one of the well summers likes to escape all the time. Just flies over the top of this electric fence and says hey the grass is greener on the other side we call her calamity jane yep you're gonna have to go back in there so i'm gonna uh take a little break from the video while i wrangle her okay um so um down here in the garage working on the lawnmower as mentioned earlier uh, just really gonna go over it's really a simple simple thing so I'm not sure I got a little bit of oil on me bear with me I'm not sure how well you can see in here but there's the oil drain spout um, there's a little uh, uh, stop nut in there which closes it off it's, you un just unscrew that with a little flathead screwdriver or a hex head and um, the oil will drain down through that hole. Uh, different lawnmowers are going to be a little bit different. But you can see I drained out all the oil. There it is. And the spout really just screws in here into the side of the engine. And there we go. Now, as you can see, it's leaking a lot of oil around there. I'm hoping it's the spout. Um, could be anything from the o-ring that's on there or a crack in the spout or hopefully not a crack in the engine block itself. But I'm going to get that cleaned up, patched up, and uh, I did get a new um, new oil spout. It, it's uh, about a $9 part and a new o-ring. So hopefully I'll get that all cleaned up. And uh, this is a good project to do while we're I can't really see it but we're enjoying some rain out here so uh, again 
awesome camera workmanship for me, but in the workshop, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, work on this um, and uh, see if I can get that cleaned up and get everything ready to go and put back in and change the oil filter, which is right above where the spout is, and then fill it up with oil and hopefully it won't be leaking anymore. All right, uh, got everything cleaned up in here. Hopefully I can get a good view in there. So you can see that's the drain plug. And it's all cleaned up in there, less oil. So the drain plug was actually pretty loose. My guess is whoever did the last oil change on it, um, when they went to when they went to uh, loosen the stop, they actually loosened the whole thing, and uh, it turned pretty freely in there, which is probably why it was leaking. It probably wasn't set in there properly, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna change it out anyway. Like I said, it's a it's an eight dollar part, not a big deal. Um, and then another um, another dollar for the O-ring. Might as well get it all put in there new. I'll get this uh, tightened up in there. And um, I did change the filter out. You can see the filter on the side here. Um, in case you're wondering why I'm going over this, you know, some of our, our people watching here, let me get around, might not... Uh, might not be familiar with maintaining a lawnmower. You just might buy it. Um, even you know if you're not on the farm uh, or whatever, you you got to get your your car's oil changed. You got to do the same thing with your lawnmower. And um, you know every uh, read the manual on the lawnmower, but it's you know every every season you should change the oil at the very least. Or if you're a commercial mower, you got to change it every uh, every um, so often, every few hundred hours. And uh, uh, so just basic maintenance on what to do here and this right here. This is your oil filter can uh, I'll show you what the other one I pulled out looked like it screws in there on the side Once you get this down, you can actually kind of consider working on your car save yourself a little bit of money instead of paying $60 every 5,000 miles or three months um, you can buy a, a gallon of oil maybe a little bit more a little bit less and a filter for your car for about 15 to 20 bucks and do it yourself. It's not that difficult. So here's the old filter. Just to show you what it looks like. Um, you know, it's just a can filter that's inside there. It actually just screws on to a, a spigot on, on the, um, there's a, a male side spigot on there. This just screws right on there. There's a little rubber gasket around here. Um, when you uh, put the new one on, it's a good idea to take a little bit of this oil just on your finger, dab it on your finger and uh, wipe it around on the gasket and that'll help the rubber expand a little bit and create a better seal. Um, you don't have to be glopping it on, it's just really just a little little uh, glaze of it. Um, and then put it on hand tight. If you have a, um, a tool, uh, th there are tools that you can use and make sure you, you uh, tighten it down pretty good to get a good seal on there. You don't want oil shooting out of your filter. And um, once you get all that done, you put your oil stop back in. In my case, that'll be this guy right here. Close it down, fill it with the appropriate amount of oil. Look at your user manual or your owner's manual. Um, it'll tell you what it needs. Uh, for one of these, I think it's like about a quart and a quarter um, for the for the uh, Kawasaki V-Twins. Um, I can't remember off the top of your head. I'll tell you what oil's recommended, um, things like that. You know, just follow the instructions. They know what they're talking about. Uh, for general purpose use, that's fine. So, so I'm gonna get in there, put that spout in there, get it tightened down. Then I'm gonna look and uh, uh, hopefully fill it up with oil and be ready to go. And uh, what I'm gonna do is put another piece of cardboard underneath here and see if we have any drips or if we do then um, I just wasted 10 bucks and uh, half an hour of my time but uh, figured I'd do it anyways all right oil change is done um, I'm did put in fresh oil in here um, 
you basically just follow the manufacturer specs as I mentioned. Um, this engine takes about uh, one and a half liters, which is yeah, roughly a bottle and a half of your typical conventional size oil bottles. Um, and then just start it up, let it flow uh, for a little bit, in like 30 seconds, minute or so. And then we're just going to go down here. And as you can see, um, got a little bit of dirt on here that's not actually oil. But uh, put another piece of cardboard down there to prevent the oil from working the uh, concrete too much. And everything's down here. I'm going to let it sit for a while and see what drips. I cleaned everything up top and bottom. And uh, hopefully I got that all taken care of. Uh, looks pretty good. I could be wrong. Um, I'm not a mechanic, but these are the kind of things we do here on the farm is, um, you know, you maintain everything. You kind of have to work, um, work at tasks that's not, not really in your wheelhouse. And um, it's, uh, that's, that's one of the bigger things that if you're going to do a small farm or even a homestead, uh, especially a homestead, um, you're pretty much on your own. Uh, I mean, I could spend the money, take it into the shop, get it worked. Um, but just to change out that part, you know, if, if I'm guesstimating, uh, because this is a John Deere, you end up going to a John Deere dealer. You can go to a small engine shop, but most people are going to take it to the dealer and they're going to pay probably about $200 to change out uh, a $10 part. And, um, yeah, it'll hopefully be done right. And then you can always go back on them when it doesn't work or something like that. But, um, these are the kind of skills on the homesteads, uh, on the, in the back far backyard farms and even on the big farms. Um, these are good things to know cause you never know when you're going to, you're going to need to do some of this stuff. And, um, this is one of those things that, uh, we're hoping to be able to teach, uh, teach the kids so that they can be self-sufficient too. Um, so, you know, not exciting, um, just a little bit of maintenance. Unfortunately, I can't take the lawnmower out to, uh, to, um, test it out, make sure everything's working fine. So as you can see, we just had a little bit of a downpour over the last 20 minutes or so, so everything's a bit wet. Um, I was hoping it was just going to be a sprinkle, but such is life. The ducks love it though, and that's all that matters. So, we are going to uh, call it a day on this video. Um, I don't think we're going to get much more done. We're expecting a couple more rounds of rain. So I won't be working on the fence or anything like that today. Uh, hopefully it'll dry out this evening. And um, as always, you know, it's, it's this is what we do. We're trying to share with you. Um, you know, I, I understand if the, the content isn't the, the most compelling, but these are the kind of things that we do every day, um, every day, every week. And, um, it's not glamorous, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm really satisfied with, with basically how my day went. I have something I can point at and say, Hey, I did this. And, um, hopefully it'll be something that we can leave, uh, for further generations and, and more importantly, help other generations that want to know, Hey, where does this stuff come from? How do we do this type of thing? Um, these are the simple things. And, um, Again, like I said, they got to be done. Might as well do them. So, as always, thanks for watching the video. Um, we will catch you next time. If you really want to support us, please subscribe. Um, I'm trying to make this YouTube channel something. Uh, I, I like doing these videos. Um, so, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you all like them too. Uh, if you like them, just subscribe. That will let me know that it's, uh, it's worth my time doing these videos. It's worth your time watching these videos. Um, if you have any, uh, comments, if, uh, as always, uh, you're more than welcome to complain about my camera workmanship. Uh, <laughs> um, but if you have any comments, if you saw anything I did blatantly wrong, um, or any, uh, useful tips and tricks that you want to share with everybody, feel free to make a comment. Um, and our usual plug, hit up our Facebook page, see what we're up to. Uh, we did postpone our, uh, a get together that we were having. Um, because of all the rain we're expecting this weekend, uh, small, uh, small group gathering. Um, and, uh, but you'll be able to keep track of everything on the Facebook page. I'll be working on the website, hopefully here in the next, uh, 
over the course of the next few weeks. Get that up to date, um, get bios of all our animals up there, see what we're up to. Uh, we do have our schedule up there. I, I apologize, we've been neglecting that. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, subscribe, let us know how we're doing. Um, come visit us, uh, you know, just, just drop us a line on Facebook, um, email us, you know, whatever. We enjoy the company and uh, we hope we are actually helping some of you out. We'll catch you on the next video.